Hi, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter, your Sports Illustrated beat writer for Sports Illustrated and the host of the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. It's great to be with you all today. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us with my non-LASIK surgery eyes. <laughs> That's a joke at some of our commenters. For the, if, it, if you don't get it, don't worry about it. It, ain't, it, it isn't anything big, but there you go. Uh, we got a really good podcast for you today. We're As you know, we've been going through position groups. We started with the defensive line. Then we went to the defensive backfield. Today, we are going to spend some time at linebacker. And we're going to look at the Raiders linebacker position. And then we got some emails from all of you. So it's going to be a, a really busy day. It's going to be a great day. I love starting my day with all of you. And uh, I know it's early, but I love spending my day with you. So when you wake up, we'll be spending our day together. So let's get right in. I want to, oh, let me remind you very quickly that as we go through these position groups, we're going to hit them all before the season starts. So bear with us. Um, I want to start with a guy who was a rookie last year. And many of you know, when, when you pick a guy, if they're, you give them three years. Now, sometimes you just know. You just know. Okay? So I want to go back for a minute. When I found out that the Raiders were looking at Alex Leatherwood, we were the only media reporting on Alex Leatherwood. The only. Because I had heard how much interest the Raiders had in him. Humongous interest. Okay? Now, my opinion was irrelevant. I was a little surprised that they went with Alex Leatherwood. I knew there was some teams trying to trade to get ahead to get Alex Leatherwood. So I was well aware there was interest in him. And that's, that's totally true. People that I trusted told me they thought a big reach at one. But as a person that my job is to cover the team, we did. We covered Leatherwood. We told everyone, boy, there were other people trying to jump up and get him, and there were, but the Raiders got him. All right? But you knew, oh, I mean, almost instantaneously. I remember, I'm going to guess nine days into training camp, 10 days into training camp, and I was just told, Wow. No, you still give guys time, but it was just clear. I mean, it it was clear that Alex and the NFL game were not a mesh. And um, at least at that point in his life, good kid, nothing. There was nothing um, bad about Alex Leatherwood at all. Just without – getting into details that don't are not necessary you just knew but then there are guys that you know you you got to let them go now there are people who get offended when i use the term that guy's a dog or this guy's a pup okay i'm not going to change decades of covering sports because you're offended at that because i'm going to tell you that's the term that's used in football so if you're offended about it just go somewhere else you don't have to watch this podcast period i'm not going to change so just but you have to understand, to become a dog, which is a proven starting producing guy, you you got to grow from a pop. And I don't care how good you are. There are so few rookies that come in as dogs. I mean, you may be a dog in college, but you're still a pup when you get to the pros. And so to grow into that, you got to give guys some time. For example, if you've ever owned a Great Dane, if you haven't, go buy a Great Dane. Everybody should own a Great Dane. Greatest dog in the world. But you get these dogs, and they get massive feet really young because they get huge, especially when you buy the ones that come from the huge side, which is what I buy. And they are so gangly. They'll just be walking across the room as pups and fall just because they don't even know how. They're trying to grow into their body. All right. We see this all the time with Dexter Ernest Wayne. You know, he's growing up and and he's trying to grow into 
things. So he's trying to be like dad. And there are some things that just, you know, he's a short little baby. And, and, and he's not going to be big and huge like dad. That's not in his genes. He's all carpenter, but it's not in his genes. Okay. He's just growing into it. And he'll see me do something. He'll try to do it and fall on his face and look at me and cry. And I'll be like, no, get up. You're fine. It's just, it's a growing process. One of the things that you, that I've noticed, and I don't think it's just in football and I don't think it's at all just Raider fans, but we live in a society right now where we get everything our way right away that we don't allow things, the natural maturation process, the growth process. We don't allow those things to happen. And so it causes people to throw people away. And no organization, I don't care if it's a football team, baseball team, a business, a church, a family, whatever, none of those succeed when you throw people away. But a lot of people do. So you get to Amari Bernie. Now, this is a guy the Raiders picked up last year. Played in seven games, started one. I think that's accurate. Yeah. This kid showed some flashes now. He did. He showed some flashes. He is a young man transitioning from one position to a linebacker, but he's fast. He's got a lot of speed. And... He's got to learn how to use that speed at linebacker. It's like I mentioned the Great Dane. And so a lot of linebackers don't have Amari Bernie's speed. It's an adjustment. And then to be asked to make that adjustment at the National Football League, I mean, the highest level of football. I mean, the National Football League is not where guys go to learn. It's where guys go to perform. And so... What I would just say to you is this. I I like Bernie. Okay. He's trying to adjust his speed to a new position. He's trying to new, you learn a new position. He's got, you can see in him what they liked. All right. You can see it. Now the question is, can he continue the transformation process? I I, I think he's got a good shot at making the roster but I don't think it's 100% at all, at all. And I'm going to explain more about that. But last year coming out of training camp, the Raiders carried four linebackers. There's a new head coach who's defensive-minded. Do I think they still carry four? Yes. Could they maybe go five? Yes. But I think they're going to stick with four because they primarily play two. But you got to have backups, and you got to have guys that are special teams Beasts. So I think I think they probably stick with four because I think they would like more linemen and probably defensive backs. So for right now, for the case of this argument, we're gonna I think Amari Bernie is on the fence, but I think he's got a shot because that speed, speed kills. I'm a bow hunter, and if you ever hunt with a bow, the faster your bow, the quicker your arrow. Well, when you first start out and you're a young kid and you can't pull back a real strong bow, you can take a shot at an animal and they duck under the arrow because they hear the twang and the arrow doesn't get there fast enough. Now I'm older and use a much faster bow and the arrow's there before the I even hear the twang. And it's just, remember, the speed kills. And so Amari Bernie has it. He's got a lot of things on his game that are really nice. Now it's got to, he's got to grow into it. He's got to grow into it. This is going to be a huge camp for him. I'm looking forward to talking to him. Next guy I want to talk about is Darian Butler. I like Butler. I do. He's just got there's something there. Okay? Does he have to progress? Yes. Does he have to stay healthy? Yes. Does he have to stay on the field? Yes. But this is a developmental player that I, I understand. He's in his third year. 
he, you know, this is a guy that he could beat out of Bernie. And, and get if they go with four. And get a spot. If not, he's a guy you want to try to keep around on the practice. Same with Bernie. These are guys that they've got some there. Now, here's the problem with today's modern NFL thinking. Everybody thinks, just go sign a free agent. Okay? But starting dogs... Don't grow on trees. To be a successful NFL franchise, I don't care who you are, you can't find one that is consistently successful, consistently, that does not develop players. I always laugh. Cut that guy. All right, who do you want to replace him with? Who do you want to replace him with? Anybody. All right. Well, that's stupid. You got to have somebody to replace him with, and it's got to be somebody that's an upgrade. Which means they've got to be available. So, to be a winning franchise in the National Football League, you've got to be able to develop talent. Teams that don't develop talent don't win the championships. And that's what it's all about. I remember the Bulls when they had Phillip Rivers, they were always a decent team, but never won a championship. Okay, do you want to be that? Now, they did develop some players, but I'm using that as an example of some people are just happy. Okay, you know, we make the playoffs every other year or whatever. We're good. No, then there are some teams that say, no, if it's not a Super Bowl, we're keep pushing. Well, that's the Raiders because their motto is just win, baby. So I'm just saying to you, I think Butler, I like the kid. When he's on the field, he shows something. But just like Bernie, the best ability is availability. It's not just being healthy. They got to trust you to be on the squad on game day. Two guys with a lot to prove. Next is a guy, everybody knows I like him, Divine Diablo. <laughs> is there a better Raider name than Divine Diablo? Diablo. <laughs> great kid, by the way. Just a great kid. Um, again, this kid's a tackling machine. A tackling machine. Those big defensive tackles, space eating. No. He's got to get better in coverage. Got to get better in, in the run game. He's not complete at all. And he's coming into his fourth year. So real quickly, we're going to find out, <clears throat> is he a consistent starter that gets a contract extension that is significant? Or does he just get a one or two year deal and show us a little bit more? This is a big year for Diablo. But I'm going to tell you something about Diablo. That kid's tough as nails. He ain't afraid of nothing. He'd go head first into a brick wall if he thought there was a ball carrier on the other side. I just, that kid just, just, and I want you to know, I'm being completely respectful when I call him a kid. I'm just an old man. I have nothing but respect for him on the field and off the field. Good kid. Good person. I always enjoy talking to him. Um, I like to watch him interact with his teammates. I like to watch him interact with people. Good person. Um, that kid's tough as nails now. He doesn't perform at the level of consistency yet of a Spillane, meaning he makes other people better. He's going to have to get more vocal. He's going to have to be able to move people around. Remember what Magic Johnson told me. Great players are good players that make everyone else around them better. Okay, Diablo's a good player. But he's not yet at the level that he's making everybody around him better, moving guys over, putting them in position. He's got to be more vocal. But he's a guy I fully expect to make the roster, and he's a very good player. Very good player. Just tough. He's what you want as a linebacker. That's a guy that if he wasn't playing football would probably be carrying a lunch pail to a, to a building site, building a 
skyscraper. He's just tough. Just a blue collar. He doesn't try to be who he's not. Um, he's just who he is. I'm, I'm a Diablo guy. Then we come to a guy that everybody knows. I'm in this guy's corner. Tough, consistent, available, makes plays, keeps his mouth shut. Luke Masterson. Love this kid. Love him. He, the last two years now, it's only two years in, plays special teams, tough as nails. He knows his stuff. He knows the playbook backwards, forwards, and behind. He shows some, and it, some of that leadership, helping people get in position, needs to be a little more vocal, needs to be a little bit more. Um, he's smart and, but he's also extremely humble, which is fine. Aiden O'Connell's that way, but Aiden's got to talk more too. He's got to find his voice, but being humble doesn't mean you don't speak. And, and that's something I'm really watching Luke for. That kid is tough. Great kid. Just a really great kid and really laid back. Um, when I say laid back, I mean, not full of himself. He's a hard worker. He's loved in the locker room. You won't find a person, fan, teammate, whatever, that's had a bad interaction with him other than an opposing player. But he hits hard. He is toughness epitomized Luke Masterson in year two that's a pup that I think could be a dog next I'm going to pronounce this guy's name wrong and I apologize because I've been called Han, Hondu Honda I mean I've been called every name in the book and but it's Kanai, -i, I believe it's pronounced Kanai, -i. Kanai, -i, Kanai, -i, Kanai, Kanai, uh, Moaga. Okay, this is a guy that they re signed, young player, super young player, didn't have him under a drafting contract, so gets a new one. This guy, now, let me just tell you. This guy is tough. This guy gets you to the ground. He just, once he gets his hands on you, <laughs> he's like a, a blood sucker. Remember when you were a kid swimming in the creeks and swimming in the rivers and the ponds and you'd have to get out and scrape off the blood suckers and, and, and if they'd gotten real big because they'd been on there maybe the whole time you and your buddies were swimming, you had to scrape. That's 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 Mawaga, man. He's a... <laughs> he gets a hold of you now. You're going down. You're going down. There, 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 there's potential there. I'm not ready to, to say he's made it. He may be a practice squad guy. There's a lot to like about that young man. And good kid. Good kid. He, I don't know, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know his family. I say that because a lot of times I've met family members of players and I I, I just don't remember. So I don't believe I've met any of his family. That 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 young man comes from, from good people. Just a good get good, hardworking kid now. He's tough. Tough. Just, ooh, I got my hands on you, and I'm not letting go. <laughs> Reminds me of that movie my nie my uh, nieces used to watch it. All it said was the, the, the main song was let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. I mean, you know, that's what everybody's thinking when Milwaukee gets some big mitts. It's like, jo it's like uh, Johnny Bench or Lance Parrish, man, with those, with those catcher's mitts. <laughs> He gets you. You're going down. 
just, just, you might as well just accept the inevitable. There's a little bit of flash there. I know the young man, I think he comes from USC, but in my personal opinion and some opinion of some people I respect, probably didn't have the best coaching, which is very weird coming from USC. But there's something there with him. Now, I, who knows if it develops? You just don't know. But he's cheap enough that you just got to look at that guy and go, oh, can I have Mawaga? Remember this. <laughs> when you watch him in the preseason games, just guy just gets you down. And that's what it's about, a linebacker. I mean, when you're a linebacker, especially – you know, you got to realize most of the time you're reaching, you're, you're getting to people past the line of scrimmage. So the whole art is just get them down as quick as you can. If that running back gets two more steps, it's two more yards. Just get them down. No, he's got to work on his angles, work on his technique. But when he gets there, you're going down. I like more. I do. Now we're going to end with a guy that will be getting an extension. Um, this is a guy who last year, and you can go back and watch, read the articles I wrote and watch the podcast. When I talked about the Raiders stole him, go read the comments. It's pretty funny. No, it's all right, pretty funny. Robert Spillane, he's him. He's a dog. Now, he's the only dog in the linebacker core. But he's a dog. This guy, there's nothing he can't do. He's Max Crosby as a linebacker. He's vocal. I mean, this is where Dave Ziegler doesn't get enough credit. He knew in year two, we got to get a Max Crosby at every level. So he goes and gets Robert Spillane. I know for a fact the Steelers were livid that they lost him. Goes, gets Marcus Sapps in the defensive backfield. That's part of the reason the Raiders were so good last year. I mean, give all the credit to Patrick Graham and Antonio Pierce for letting him do what he wanted to do. But he had some 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 guys back there. He had some dogs to help them young pups grow up. And, and here's the whole deal. You're not going to win football with 53 veterans. you got to develop people. Robert Spillane made guys better. He's a great player. Robert Spillane, tough. Tough. Oh, my goodness. That man is tough. I have watched him. Put his nose right on a big 340-pound offensive lineman sternum to move him out of the way to just go get to a running back. Dear Lord. If Robert Spillane can't tackle you, you can't be tackled. This is the kind of guy that Earl Campbell, who could come run, or Natron the Bomb, could come at him. Bo Jackson. And he's just like, bam, let's go head to head. Love it. This guy is a human rhinoceros. Just, he, he's never seen a tackle he didn't want. He just, and so teams move away from him and it helped Diablo to get a ton of tackles. Him and Diablo are a good punch now. Good punch. But but that's Spillane, man. He just, he knows what he's doing. And, and, and he gets everybody. Remember I shared this with you last year. The, the great players make every, everybody better. And so it's one thing to be able to read the play. Okay. Judging where the fullback is, judging where the off, you know, 
where the tight end is, judging how they have the extra offensive lineman, judging where the slot receiver is, whatever. I can tell the plays going here. I've watched a lot of film. Bam, the ball gets hiked. You go there, you make the play. That's, that's a good player. That's a good player. But a great player makes everybody else better. So a great player sees it all and processes it so quickly that then he's moving guys into position. See, Diablo can read it and go make the play. Spillane reads it and reads it so fast, he then helps everyone else to go make the play. See, a good player can read it and say, okay, this is what I have to do. A great player reads it and says, okay, this is what I have to do, and I better tell this guy and this guy what they have to do. It's like having a quarterback on the field now, boys and girls. That's like having a remote control. This football. That's dogs. That's Robert Spillane. He's fun to watch. That, that guy's worth the price of admission. You ever wonder, well, it's expensive to go to a Raider game. Yeah, it is. But you get to watch Max Crosby. Robert Spillane, there's a lot of good players. I challenge you, if you got any old games DVR'd and you're looking for something to do this summer as we suffer through our long trek through the wilderness waiting for the season, just go put on your DVR and watch old Robert Spillane. You'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, unbelievable. Um, and, and his ability to make adjustments even makes Max Crosby better. Max is able to freelance a little bit more because he's got time. I'm just telling you. So when you look at this, there are six linebackers on the roster right now. If the Raiders do what they did last year and carry four, I would think Spillane, Masterson, and Diablo are locks. So really there's one position open. Okay. The Raiders could add a linebacker through free agency, a trade, or even go pick one. I would think Butler and Bernie got a shot. I think they have a shot. Mawaga, I think he's got a shot. But it wouldn't surprise me if all three of those guys. Started on practice, and they draft one. Not saying that will happen. I'm, I'm just saying there's going to be a battle there for LB4. And again, that's if they if they carry four. Maybe they carry five. I don't know, but because linebackers do a lot of special team stuff. But there's your looking at the Las Vegas Raiders linebackers. All right, let's get to some email. How about this one? This one comes from Matt V. Hey, Hondo, I know you thought the scouting department under Mayock, under Mike Mayock was unorganized, but I would like your opinion on how, on his talent evaluation. I know Max Crosby was his pick. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, when I say to you, I when you say I know you thought the scouting department was on, uh, under Mayock was unorganized, that's what I heard from NFL people. I wasn't in the room. And I know that was the sentiment of, uh, I, I would I don't know that I would use the word unorganized, but just say it certainly needed an upgrade under Ziegler. And they did. It did. Um, Mike was a very good talent evaluator. Very good. And a good guy, by the way. Very good talent evaluator. Very good guy. And the problem is, is kind of the way the Raiders did it is Al Davis was so strong. He had a few guys he listened to. Then obviously Al... Um, wasn't Al for the last several years. Um, and then a Mayock steps in and he's a very strong evaluator. And now the Raiders have taken the approach. We want a bunch of strong evaluators, a bunch of strong evaluators. So there you go. Um, but yes, he was a very good evaluator. Next comes to us from James O. 
Dear Hondo, I was surprised to hear Derek Carr say he wanted to start a fight with Max Crosby and set him up to take the blame. It seems out of character. I know Max plays with passion and can get and let things get away from him, such as little white comments to Minshew. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'll go back and address this. But do you think that's something Max would fall for? Would Max, would Max, would Max would hurt Derek in the heat of passion? Or would he know how much is enough to make Derek realize the mistake he made without hurting him too badly, James Orr? Man, there's a lot here I take umbrage with, James. First, Derek did nothing wrong. I talked about this either in yesterday or the day before his podcast. He was having fun with it. He's friends with Max. He did nothing wrong at all. So when you say you're surprised to hear Derek say it, he wanted to start a fight with Max. Uh, it seems out of character. I, I I know Derek, and I can tell by this that you don't. I don't mean that disrespectfully to you, James. Derek loves to have fun with his old teammates and his teammates. He was being playful. I have no idea how you could take that out of out of character for Derek. So I, that blows my mind. And then when you say, I know Max plays with passion, can let it get away from him, such as his little boy comments to Minshew last year. How does that get away? I don't understand what Max did wrong there. Hey, little boy. Hey, little boy. He, he's he's messing with him. He's getting in his head. And then you saw Minshew off the field on his own sideline talking about it. That's the way Max plays. I don't know how that's letting it get ahead of get away from him. And Max is good friends with um, Patrick Mahomes. He doesn't let it get away. He knows how to stop. Would he hurt Derek? Well, if tackling him hurt him or hitting him hurt him, yes, but he's not going to go out to hurt Derek. That's not how he – Max is a lot of things. He's not dirty. I think sometimes – people almost look for things um, to be critical of. I think maybe that's the case here. I don't think Derek did anything wrong. I don't think Max did anything wrong with Minshew. I want him to, I've learned a new term from Max, chop it up. I want him and Derek chopping it up in the off season. It's fun. It's fun. Nothing wrong with it. Derek's very playful in a good way. And Derek's having fun with it. I think everybody should have fun with it. Next, Bobby M. in Austin, Texas. Why do you think the Raiders have not done more with Bo Jackson? I have always wondered why he has not been a part of the Raiders' home office. Maybe he's just had no interest. But, uh, but man, what a blessing it would be to watch him in his prime. I just think it would be cool to have him in the room, what are your thoughts? I think my thoughts are, I think Bo does exactly what Bo wants to. I think the Raiders are very embracive of him. I think he embraces the Raiders. I just think at the end of the day, some guys retire from football and want to get away from it. Want to be done. Brian Hoyer is a great friend of mine. Played in the NFL for 14 seasons. Bill Belichick wanted him to be a coach. Several others wanted him to be a coach. He's like, no, I don't want to coach. I love the game, played the game, don't want to coach. Don't want to work those hours. Coaches work longer than players. They don't make as much money as players. He's got a beautiful family and kids, just doesn't want to do it. Some guys love the game, but they, they love playing it. Then there are some guys like Antonio Pierce, man. They're football junkies. He wants to play it. He wants to coach it. He wants to be around it. That's it. Don't read too much into that. There is a great relationship. Promise. Sorry, I do that for our listeners in the comment section with the with the drinking game. All right. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for joining us for today's podcast. Got a lot of good stuff coming up. 
You're not going to want to miss it. But we broke down those linebackers, answered a few of your questions, and we got our morning started in a great way. So thanks for being with us. Have a great day, everybody. God bless you. See you tomorrow.